obviously this isn't new or anything. I'm not the only one who does this. But I, I, I kind of wanted to just go through Reddit and see what the people on Reddit are saying about Raid. I don't know if I'm going to make this like a regular thing, but I do find myself scrolling on Reddit on my phone and reacting and like reading what other people are saying, people in the community who aren't on YouTube um, per se. Like, I mean, not all of them are not on YouTube, but a lot of these people on Reddit are able to share unbiased opinions. Not that you can't do that on YouTube, but I, I don't know. I feel like Reddit is a more personal, real experience, more unfiltered in a way. So uh, in this video, I'm just going to hang out and if you vibe with something here or if you want to talk about something, as always, I open up discussions for us to go back and forth or you can go back and forth with somebody in the community. That That's basically what this is going to be. So I'm just going to go in and, and react to everything. So weekly showcase thread, upcoming progressive chance, not important. Another reminder. <laughs> this is exactly what I mean. Another reminder that gold five arena rewards are a joke. Here's my here's my two cents on this, right? Obviously, obviously, you're going to get to a point where you can smash gold five, where you can just pretty much stay in gold five. I would argue that silver, like climbing silver is actually a lot harder. And maybe even gold one, two, maybe three is also kind of difficult to deal with in my, you know, the way that I remember things. But... It might just be that my champions were different when I was struggling and my gear was different and my knowledge was different, um, you know, way back then. But once I got to gold four and once I've gotten to gold five, it's not really a struggle anymore. But these rewards are pretty much a joke. I mean, look at this. When you're a gold five, like, I don't use this gear. Divine Speed is probably the only thing here that I use. And I only keep Divine Speed if it's got a speed substat on it and if i roll on said sub speed substat thingy i'm not going to use divine gear divine offense there's no point in having a shield why would i choose divine offense versus something like cruel or savage same thing with life why would i choose divine life over immortal or um you know whatever i think those are the only three actually some potions irrelevant pretty much and 70 gems i guess that's relatively cool but yeah like these rewards are a complete joke and it's let me show you guys platinum all right so i've you guys this is no secret i'm a plat level player woohoo big flex who the fuck cares but um what's it called i don't really do i don't really do plat anymore like it's not it's not really fun to me but let's go ahead and look at the rewards that you get from being in plat here's synth for an example he gets, I, I guess, deflection gear is cool. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't really use it for anything except for cheesing with Paragon against the Scarab King. Swift Parry is nice, but I don't use it too much. Maybe on like one of my nukers, but I'm not going to use Swift Parry over something like Lethal or Savage. You know what I mean? Or Merciless. Avoid Shard is nice, but for the amount of difficulty that it is to place to be in the top 500 of Arena. I don't think these rewards are enough. You get a void shard sometimes, um, gems. Guys, when I started, here's, here's another one. Another player, OG Long D, more swift parry, an epic book, 100 gems. Uh, he got an, a legendary book this one time. That's pretty cool. Let me go back to, let's see, where can I find me? I know I'm up here somewhere. I haven't done it in a while, but look, I placed 182, and look what I got. I got Deflection Gear and Swift Parry, and if I remember correctly, a lot of these didn't even roll too nicely. I got an Epic Book, Big Whoop, 100 Gems, and I'm not trying to complain or anything, but I'm just saying the amount of difficulty it is. Look, 68, top 100 worldwide, Swift Parry Gear, Void Shard, like I'm, you know, if this rolls nicely cool but if it doesn't which more than likely it probably isn't going to roll nicely because that's just the way that rng works here the t the, the difficulty that it takes is just not worth it i think it, it's it's crazy so yeah I, I definitely see what what they're what they're talking about here the meme team yep this is the meme team right here duchess armands i fucking hate armands dude i have him but he's becoming one of those champions that i hate so much that even I don't want to use him. 
but he's such an OP champion. But he's so annoying. I was, I did a fight last night. I started. I was watching Godzilla, uh, King Kong, the Rise of the the newest one, basically. And I went into a team, and I fought this team right here, pretty much this same team. Actually, no, it wasn't Sun Wukong. It was Warlord. But this was the team here, and our Mons basically kept sheeping and CCing my team and my Duchess. So when I checked my phone again, it was like 20 minutes later. And I was like, why is this, why is this fight 20 minutes long? It's Armand's constantly sheeping Duchess. And every time Duchess would come back <laughs> because her skills are on cooldown. And because whenever you come back from sheep, you're coming back with half of your health. Um, like the fight was just going on in perpetuity. Eventually I just left. But yeah, that was a big rip waste of time that or waste of battery. When your computer crashes two hours into your Hydra run. Yeah. It happens. Or or when they, they have um what do you call it? Server updates or something like that. Yeah, that, that hurts. And some of these guys are really into Hydra, so they'll do manual runs. I haven't like I did a manual run for a video last week. I'm gonna do another manual run for another video sometime in the future. But I don't do I don't do manual runs anymore. It's just not worth it to me to to do that every week. That's part of the reason why I think you should try your best to get everything on auto so you can set it, forget it, walk away, go do something else, but you know, not only buy your time back, but like kind of get your time back. You don't want to be one of those guys who spends hours doing manual hydra runs and then restarting. Like if that's your thing, cool. I'm not shaming you if that's what you want to do, but for me personally, and I'm not putting a, this as a blanket statement, but me personally, I think about all the times I did manual Hydra runs and it didn't really produce anything for me in the long grand scheme of things. Like if I had to take all the hours that I put cumulatively, cumulatively in my life doing manual runs, that's like hours, hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours spent in a game that honestly didn't provide much for me at the end of the day. Like I enjoy Raid, don't get me wrong. I think it's fun. And when you're enjoying something, you enjoy it and you know that's the value in there as long as you're just being happy but when i think about it now i'm just like oh shoot that could have been working on my other channel or, or something like that i don't know that's just i'm just spitballing here whatever thoughts come into my mind that's what we're going that's what we're, what we're going with and you can obviously debate with me in the comments legit cannot stand these people who will wait on who'll wait out the timer on every single option Three people in the last two days go full tank comps, wait out 30 seconds on lock-in, and then every single 15 uh, second timer to play their turn. Didn't get a screenshot, 13 minute fight, flipped on auto, went AFK, actually horrid. By Sonic, fuck my wife. <laughs> Look at this name here. Yeah, and I've actually done a few videos talking about that. I've done some streams where I run into people who like to stall in live arena. So what I do is I pretty much do the same thing with them so i will take it off auto if if i know that they're doing this i'll take it off auto and i usually just set it down but the thing is if you set it down polarium has this i don't know mechanic where after a while if it detects that you're not there it'll automatically throw your team on auto so what you have to do is kind of be paying attention there and then you're gonna have to make sure you're pressing off auto because if they want to play the game you you know they can play the game i mean you know we can do this we can waste time if we want to waste time except the difference is i'm probably watching a youtube video or i'm like cooking something or like i'm hanging out or i'm, I'm working on, on on doing youtube stuff so that's that's my whole thing but yeah i hunt horrid i hate that mechanic i think 15 seconds is way too long for us to be sitting in live arena Need help with Doom Tower Floor 50 Dreadhorn. Let's see if we can find anything here. So Dreadhorn is the bomb guy, right? Bommel? Yeah, Bommel. So what you're going to want to do here is probably get good, honestly. I'm kidding. Um... See, you can't really use shields because of bombs. Here's the thing, guys. I don't. I haven't done an an honest bombel dreadhorn team in a long time. Like you could probably manual it with 
a good support team. So probably somebody like I would even I would even suggest probably doing Rathalos, UDK, Sun Wukong, because every time Sun Wukong dies, he'll come right back. I've actually done it with with the um, God, what's this guy right here? What's his name? He basically gives you high resistance and he converts his accuracy or he converts his resistance. One of those things, right? But you can actually redirect the debuffs that are on your team and send that back to Bommel. And I do remember when I first was introduced to Bommel or when Bommel first came out of Doom Tower, that's actually what I did. So I would use him to redirect the bombs or anything that was placed on me and I sent it back to Bommel. Decreased attack is going to be huge for you, so definitely consider doing that. Uh, a tanky team is going to be very nice. I don't know if having a lot of debuffs like HP burns and poisons are a good thing. If I remember correctly, it becomes a detriment. So if you try to use a bunch of debuffs like that, I think Bommel will respond by putting more bombs down. Or, oh, if you try to decrease turn meter also, he puts more bombs down. Speaking of dealing with bombs, he has Yakarl here. Freezing the bombs would actually reduce the damage. Somebody fact check me, but I'm pretty sure that's the way that it works. If, you, if you're able to freeze the bombs, that's what you would do. Uh, again, here's the thing. Raid is designed to be difficult in the sense that you're going to have to grind. You're going to have to stay in the game, have more session time over a long period, just so that you can eventually beat these teams if you are new and if you're at the point where you've you've reached something in the game that you can't complete this is how raid is guys watch this you either pay or you come back when you can beat that whatever that difficult uh, situation is that's just the way it is oh you can't do hydra right now come back come back when you have the champion or when you have the gear for it there's no point in stressing over something that like eventually you'll be able to just do if you stick stick with it long enough and you don't you don't even have to like really work too hard on it eventually it's just one of those things and guys i've done multiple accounts i've taken so many accounts to the end game before and it's all the same thing i could sit there and stress over doing doom tower but i know for a fact that with time passively I'm probably going to be able to beat whatever it is, the Dark Fae or whatever, uh, One King Hydra. So, you know, it's a game. Just enjoy it. You'll get back to it. It's going to happen for you. Is Cornelia good? I think she was, but I think she also got ner pseudo nerfed. Let's see what the people in the comments are saying. She can solo Bommel, Scarab, and Griffin, Nether Spider. Uh, I don't... Does she? I think she maybe used to, but I don't know if she can anymore. Great for Bobble until they changed Frenzy Gear. That's what it was. She's decent for Sand Devil and Faction Wars. Partially interested, seeing her wreck things in Arena. But the more I investigated, the less interested I was. She's very niche, protecting my vault. Yeah. Why does Hell Hades say she's good? I don't know. Read what he says. I think she was pretty niche. And then something changed with gearing, and the update hasn't reflected. Yeah, I think that's the case. I never really used Cornelia for anything. What's the value for this champ training? Oh, wait, hold on. What is the value of going for this champ training for Prism Fragment? I guess if you wanted to get the Prism Crystals, but we've seen, like, Ash has done videos, right? He's done he's done multiple videos where he's opened, like, a bunch of Prism Crystals or Prism Shards, and I think he did one where he basically got crap. I would not pay or go for this. I think there's no Mercy system for that too, right? My first year as a Corrupted Alliance Pure. What is this? What? Okay. I'm sorry, man. That's a lot to read. Current champ training event is great for early player. Yeah. Noldor, Neldor Rizblade. He's... Little known fact, I was actually the first person, the first content creator to do a guide on Neldor uh, Rhymeblade. So that's pretty cool. Got a second Neldor today. Admittedly, I haven't built the first one yet. But if I did, is it worth building two of him? Yes. Should I empower him since my faction guardians are already at full? Yes. If you if you don't have somebody like Creoden or you don't have a second multi-hitter freezer on the A1, then I would probably consider you not building a second one and then plus one or 
Uh, well, he's got his uh, faction guardians already up. I'd probably plus one Neldor. Because if you have Creedon, who does the same thing, or if you have Nut, who does the same thing with your Carl, hard Fire Knight just got easier for you. But yeah, Neldor Rizblade, uh, Rhyme Blade, awesome champion. Improve the classic arena takedown reward. Yes. What is this? This reward needs to get updated. Especially because didn't they increase the cap for what you need to achieve? Like the threshold to, to reach these rewards has been increased, right? Am I right? Or am I wrong? Somebody, somebody fact check me. For what they're giving us, I don't think, I don't think it's appropriate. Look at this. Is that a five star? No, that's six stars. I'm tripping. But yeah, like this is like 75 energy. Cool. I can do one super raid for for something. Stage 25 of Sand Devil, maybe. 100k silver. Upgrade something to level eight, maybe. 25, 25 gems. Some charm. Seven, 750 soul coins. That's cool, I guess. Tag Arena sucks. Yes, and it's going to suck for a while. Especially in bronze. But, just like I said earlier, eventually it's going to happen. I I'm curious to see what people will say here. It may be your builds. Yeah, it might be your builds. Your team sucks, unfortunately, build Arena teams. Yeah, so actually if we stop and take a look at the his teams. Um, it really depends on the builds here. Like, let's look at the first team. I'm, I'm not going to bother looking at the rest of them. Just but, Well, let's look at the one that the, the ones that failed, actually. So we have Snow White, Paragon, Rector Drath, and Chronicle. There's no damage. There's no damage there. Ragash. So what I would do, because he's got, he's got three nukers. I guess R Ragash could be a nuker, and he could also do support. I think he's an awesome champion. I would probably switch out his nukers move his nukers around right because he's got he's got a bunch of supports on one team his middle team and then he's got a bunch of nukers on his third team it could also be builds uh maybe you're not going fast enough maybe you're, you're the way that you have certain champions put together isn't exactly the best and the other thing is you got to pick your teams you got to pick your teams but this takes practice this takes time so I wouldn't stress over it. Once you you get into it and you start learning how champions work and you start going out of your way to build champions and learn the synergy between different champions and different teams and the more you're you're going up against other teams, you're going to start to kind of understand the flow and understand how to counter other uh, teams. Summon pool, probably a dumb question, but if you pull from the pool using prism crystals, does that champ then go away? For example, if I pull the Geo, would he then be taken out of the pool? Really want Mashalid. Thanks in advance. I don't think so. But let's see what the people say. No, you can get multiple of the same champs. Yep. Uh, no, you can pull it out and <laughs> you can pull out endlessly. I wouldn't do this. It's typically a 6% chance on a legendary, very low. Open these rainbow prisms, free to play 10 to 15 times. Received only one Lego. Chance was 12% at the point on prism. Think about it. Yeah. So again, I'm not a, not all about it. Dark Fae. suggestions to beat Dark Fae. Uh, probably you have Nuke Wukong, so I'd probably use Wukong. I would probably even consider. Hmm, Fortis is here. That's he's a pretty cool champion. Yeah. So definitely put in Deacon. Because he has the turn meter manipulation. I would put New Kong in there. If he can hit hard enough, he could probably smash through your team. And that could spread. And you, th the faster you can take down your copies, the better. Maybe even bring in Rathalos as well. Probably the speed lead with him. I know that Geomancer has a decreased turn meter effect. So potentially that. And yeah, I mean, you're probably going to be struggling it's Dark Fey, even on normal, for what looks like this account level is at. I don't think you're quite there yet. Uh, you know, you have Apothecary. I would probably use Apothecary for the speed boost and turn meter fill. The point is you want to go, you want to go as fast as possible while making sure your other team also stays relatively low. When you get to the higher levels of Dark Fey, she's gonna be moving so fast, it's almost imperative that you're gonna have decrease you're gonna need decreased speed. So Go fast, make sure the other team goes slower, 
and make sure you're nuking down the opposite team. Three Ferric and the Fats. Question. What's the question? What's your question? Oh, would it be insane to level them all up, throw them in something like Toxic, and use all three to beat down the clan boss? No. Keep them for Hydra? Maybe not. Melt one into the other? Still early game. So, the issue with, with clan boss is that might work for one king, like, easy and normal. But eventually, you're going to get to the point where you can't just nuke your way through the clan boss. So, it's not an entirely dumb question, because I know if he's asking this question there's other people asking this question do not do this you might want to might that's a big if it's very gear intensive you might want to keep just two ferric and the fats and i'm thinking later down the line double ally attack for for fire knight is going to be pretty nice ferric and the fat having two of them for ally attack is going to be nice hydra that's two hydra teams right there he's not he's not going to be like the best for hydra in my opinion but ally attack does come in uses um so yeah there's there's definitely application but you would have to kind of learn the game a little bit more and then go on and move that but i wouldn't suggest having three full ferric in the fats i think you're okay with one maybe two centronos is another thing maybe two but i would stick to just one recruiting new members Scuramus a1 Counterattack. His A1. What is this? I don't actually think I'm not interested. Acrisia. What about? What about her? I just want to know if my build is good or not. I have her speed tune for clan boss. Don't. I'm trying to get her in lethal gear, but I'm going stats over sets. I've seen some posts about crit cap, wondering if it's true and what the crit cap is. Okay. This is not entirely bad but he's got he's got taurus so i'm gonna assume he's somewhere in the maybe beginning of late game he's been playing for a while he's got ninja ronda i don't think this is probably the best build he is over crit right now because perfect crit at 100 would be 85 good crit rate good crit damage i would try to get her in savage though the hp and attack is kind of low she doesn't really need accuracy. You just want her to do straight damage. And because of that, you're hindering her by not putting her in ignore damage. I am assuming, based on the champions that what I'm seeing here, you could probably do Fire Knight. Go farm Fire Knight. And you probably have the capability to do lethal gear. So go farm lethal gear. Yeah, this is, this is not... This is not what I would recommend, but if that's what you can do, that's what you can do. But I would be hard-pressed to believe that you can't do what you need to do. Like, he's got the stats in the right direction. But, yeah. Geomancer any good? Yes, he's good. Thoughts on old Grukus? I don't think about him. Wixwell reapplies shield buff. Trying to get Wixwell infinity. I don't... So, here's, the, here's my bit on the Wixwell shield thing. And I don't, I don't regret not going for him. Like I said, I one key, I over one key all Hydra heads. I'm putting up billions on on my accounts for Hydra Clash. Wixwell wasn't gonna do anything for me other than put out more things, but like I don't care about Hydra that much anymore. So if you're in the end game, I don't think you should feel badly about missing out on Wixwell unless you're struggling in Hydra. So I don't know too much. With that being said, I don't know too much about the whole Wixwell situation. The other thing is, I don't think Polarium is going to be okay. Like, do you really think Polarium is going to let this slide? Honestly. Do you really think they're going to let this Wixwell Yannicka thing last for too long? No. They're going to figure out some way to make sure that Hydra is working as intended. Trust me. Now, again, I could be wrong, but this is my strong opinion. I am 95% sure this isn't going to last. You know, milk it while you can, that's cool, but it's not, it's not going to last. Why? Because, effectively, Hydra has become... Hydra Clash and Hydra has become, you know, a joke. It's cool to see big numbers in Hydra, 
I like seeing big numbers in Hydra. That's why I got to the point where I can full auto billions of damage. But this mate this team makes it so that Hydra and Hydra Clash is accessible to a greater majority of people. Wix will, if you did the fusion, kind of free, right? Yannicka is free because you can get her from doing, I think it's Tag Team Arena, right? And because it's so accessible to a lot of people, I don't think Polarium is going to let this, let people get away with this. I think they're going to figure something out. I think they're thinking about it right now. They're thinking about how they're going to, they're probably looking for a, a bug in, in Hydra and they're going to get rid of this. Do I think they should? No, I don't think they should. I think that if you can build this team, you should build it. I think that uh, you should be able to do stupid, dumb amounts of damage in, in Hydra just to kind of stick it to the man, you know, wh whatever that is. I'm a fan of the team. I'm a fan of behind the principle, the idea behind it, mostly. But I also strongly believe they're not going to let us get away with it. Logically speaking, they shouldn't touch Wixpill. They shouldn't touch any of the champions or, or any of, uh, of Hydra. I don't believe that they, they, they're going to leave it alone, though. Why do I think that they shouldn't, logically speaking? Because if Trunda and Yumiko has gotten away with doing what they've done so far in Hydra, pragmatically speaking, they're not going to touch Wixwell, Yannicka, or Hydra again just because of this, right? Our other counter-argument is it's not that easy to get Trunda and to get Trunda where she needs to be to smack that hard and it's not that easy unless you're paying to get yumiko and to get yumiko where, where it needs to be right that's my two cents on it so i wouldn't stress too much about wixwell if they if they don't touch wixwell and they let this slide then cool that's great but i think that's gonna mean that polarium's probably gonna lose out on some money a lot of money quote unquote but who knows who should i book put uh, lego books into next I'm leaning towards Sun Wukong. I'm leaning towards Sun Wukong, but I don't see... Let's see. Yeah, Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong is such an awesome champion. Probably one of the best uh, champions that they gave away. Just awesome champion altogether. What are the best characters for Fire Knight? Immediately, what comes to mind? Probably ally attackers like Cardiel, Farrakhan and the Fat. Cold Hearts. Yeah, Cold Heart. Um, Allure. OG champion. Allure is probably going to do you wonders. So, yeah. Recently got Uko. What do I do with him? Free to play. Ninth day. So with Uko, I'm assuming you're going to be in the new game. I would focus mainly on just building him fast and accurate. Fast and accurate. Max him out. He's going to do wonders for you all around raid. If you can get to the point where you can put him in provoke gear and stun gear, then you would do pretty well. Provoke gear if you're going to use him in Hydra. Stun gear if you're going to try and smash through arena. He's an awesome champion. What gear should uh, gear set should I use for Tamija? Um, I actually don't know. I don't know. Let me see. Perception, lots of speed, maybe accuracy. Wouldn't really care about anything else. Okay, cool. There you guys have it. Unable to get the impulse set from live arena box. Do mythical souls ever go for sale? How much do they cost? I don't know. Is Otatsu good? Yes, Faction Wars, decrease attack, decrease, um, what do you call it, uh, defense. Does he have a heal? Good for traditional stand boss, uh, uh, clan boss, stun target, leech, decrease attack, increase defense. That's what it is. Only shame is not decrease, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he's a, good, he's a good champion. I've slept on him, but I'm at the point where uh, I don't need him for anything. Newbie, let's see if there's anything interesting. Should be able to do UNM, probably. I don't even know what to say about this. I lost the battle. What's going on here? What? Have you guys... Has this happened to you guys before? This has happened to me before. You know what was funny? Um, I did a... I, I, had, I was going up against somebody and I sheeped their champion with Armands and then I hit them again with Sun Wukong's A2, and I killed them, but immediately sheeped them again. So so they died, came back from being sheeped, and then got sheeped again. Let's see. Nightmare, how do I get multiple Crusaders? Let's see. One key, UNM. Dev's talking about max shield size warning. Ooh. 
In an interview with CC's, Dev mentioned, devs mentioned that the max shield cap should be adjusted. The CC's agreed. I didn't agree to anything. That a nerf to cap the max size that a shield can grow will be coming in the future. Exactly what I'm talking about, guys. Whether or not destroys this destroys infinite shield teams will depend on how much the cap is. Hopefully, it addresses the Yannicka and Ironclad issue, but still allows big enough shield to carry on an infinity shield team. I'd keep suggesting other CB teams intact if you recently moved to Wigswell Infinity comps, just in case. Yeah, I told you. The, the, dev, the devs are already talking about it. They're already thinking about it. And I'm not up to date with the news, guys. I, I don't really watch um, other content creators that much anymore. Unless I'm like there to support them, like HDub. But uh, like, there's no real reason for me to, to sit there and watch a bunch of CCs anymore. Because we're all saying the same shit. We're all saying the same things. You know what I mean? With the exception of you know the odd team that comes out that, that's going to break the game, quote-unquote. Like... Bronco, Bronco and his team are exceptional. You know, they they're they're doing massive work for the community. In, in, in you know, the way that they bring out a bunch of teams and share them amongst the community is huge. So big shout out to Bronco and his team. I know uh, Yannick is is also another person behind the uh, the scenes there. But yeah, his entire team join his Discord. You know, share whatever teams you got with him. Um, but yeah, uh, Hell Hades I watch. Ash I watch for entertainment. Hell Hades and Saf, great for information. But yeah, I don't really watch people, so I don't really keep up with the news anymore because it's kind of all the same thing, you know? Oh, this is happening. This sucks. This is happening. This is great. It, it just goes back and forth. I'm not complaining about it, but I'm, I'm just letting you guys know where I'm coming from. So I don't know anything going on about Wixwill except for what I see from the people in my Discord talking about, but I don't even really read what anybody's talking about anymore and what I see from thumbnails. We chose the kit of this one. To nerf it would be a heck of a blow. Yeah, yeah, it would. If they'll adjust the shield, they should also adjust Trunda, exactly. Seeing the the devs defend Trunda and shoot down any big brain strat is trying to compete that is trying to compete with her is getting boring. The only reason they don't want to nerf Trunda Yumiko is because Yumiko is a void, so they rake in cash of people wailing for them, exactly. If Cadaver was a Lego, he wouldn't have been touched at all. Doubly so if he was a void Lego. This is true. This is true. 100% true. If they're truly if they're truly trying to stop the Yannicka Ironclad teams, then all it takes is what they did to Aislinn. Damage cannot see the 1000% of attack or whatever the damage stat is. Then, and I say this as a, as a Trunda user, fix her A2, make Yumiko unable to reset other champs, done. But money, guys. You guys aren't understanding money. Hello? Duh. Money. Of course we're not going to do that. Of course we're not going to fix Trunda Yumiko. You can... Money. Duh. It's quite elementary. Obviously. So they're going to nerf Hydra comps that max out a couple billion damage, but leave insanely broken Trunda comps that can do up to 90 billion damage on NM? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Money. Polarium clearly never playtests their game with new champions. You know, it's weird. You would think that they, they have a team, a set team of people who maybe even cover the game. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, right? Before they release a champion, maybe have them, these specific people, test the uh, play test. There should be a server where they play test and they gather information on it before releasing the champion. Where they let the people play test. And um, yeah, that would that would be a really good idea before releasing champions. You know, let it sit in the playtest server for a little bit before doing that. I don't know. I, what do I know? I could probably even be wrong. Maybe maybe I just look like a complete asshole, a complete idiot, because maybe they're already doing that and still these things happen. But I don't know. I really hope not. This was my first fusion. I worked bloody hard to get them. How many of you guys are in the community saying if they nerf Wixville, I am done? My whole new clan boss team depends on him. I'm currently building a whole new team. All five champs I'm having to level from the bottom up. Otherwise, I'm going to have to stick to three key NM until I get better champs. I hope they leave him alone or at least or at least leave his shield cap high enough to run Wixville comps. I built him two other champs. Capping shields yet capping shields yet Trunda still runs rampant. I'm going to be so pissed. Just use six legendary books, 20 mil silver, 
two weeks of time doing that fusion and they're going to nerf him, I'm a rage. They, they should probably refund a bunch of that stuff. It's imperative that Polarium gives some transparency over this being a nerf to Wixpill or a nerf to Yannicka Ironclad damage since Wixpill requires a ton of legendary books and investment to build. A nerf to Wixpill is far worse than the nerf that they did to Rodos. And Rodos is my boy Rodos, right? Everybody knows he's my favorite champion. I've done... Anyway, yeah. He got nerfed like, what, four times? Still, he's, he still fucking rocks. Rodos is still one of the best magic attackers in the game. A nerf to Wix will makes him nearly unusable as he is simply outclassed by champions like Uko, Nekmo, and Provoke sets on Hydra with some AoEs and a one AoE A1s and some community fusion this would be. Some community fusion this would be, yeah. If the CCs are advocating nerfing Wixville directly to Polarium after many of them made countless monetized videos highlighting comps around him, shame on them. I'm not one of those CCs, by the way. And, you know, no shade to, to, to whatever. We all do what we got to do. Earn your buck. This isn't my, you know, this channel. I'm not, I'm not relying on this channel for money, by the way. Just, just pointing that out. So I don't care if you watch my shit or not. I'd like it if you did, because I enjoy hanging out with you guys. And a lot of you guys who are in my community fucking rock. But I'm not one of those guys who needs this to, 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 to live. You know what I mean? I'm perfectly fine if you watch my shit or not. We all knew this was coming. Exactly. We all knew this was coming. This, you know, just to further elaborate this point, I think it's not only just about... So, yeah, a lot of CCs get money by way of... Let me just show you guys. Let me just show you guys. Let me show you guys how this works. All right. So whenever you do... Um, a YouTube video, you're going to see, especially for Raid, or I guess we're talking about in the context of Raid, um, you're going to see monetize, monetization once you get to a certain point. So let's just let's just go off this video right here. Got 568 views. We checked the monetization uh, analytics right here. Okay. So here, I got 46 cents. Do you really think I'm fucking worried about you guys watching my shit? No, it's pennies. Of course, this is scalable, right? There, there are people who do very well with videos and they're able to rake in a lot of money. I, like, I'm, I'm, I guarantee you guys, if we were to look up at the analytics of like Ash or Hell Hades, you would see this number a lot higher. The, the RPMs for gaming is not that high. I do this because I'm passionate about it, right? I'm not doing this, this channel for money, okay? Now, it could get to a point where I do make enough money on this to be able to not just go outside but uh you, you know it, it, if it happens it happens but i'm not too worried about it on this channel my other channel that's what i'm really focused on but yeah uh let's look at this one right here this one got a thousand views so the way that it works for monetization is you earn a specific amount of money based on per thousand views if you don't reach a thousand views you're gonna see pennies but like let's look at this video's analytics right here Okay, I got for 1,000 views, I got four bucks. I could maybe buy a Starbucks coffee. You, you know what I mean? And um, where does it say? Let me see. So everybody skipped here. That's that's why I have time codes for all you people complaining about time wasted or whatnot. Um, revenue. Let's see revenue. Right here. Revenue for every 1,000 views. And, it, and this changes per video, right? So for every 1,000 views that I get, I'm getting $3.85. And these are all from just ads, okay? And this changes for everything. So yeah, there is monetization involved whenever you guys click on our videos and, and watch all the way through. So, you know, that's just... I'm not trying to put anybody on blast, but yeah, he's he's not... Rake Leaver is not wrong. CC is advocating Wixwill. Yes, you're sharing um amongst the community a team that can do very well and that's cool <laughs> but you know and and i say this just so you guys are aware and there's full transparency there needs to be full transparency um yeah there's there's monetization involved there is money involved and um you know that it is what it is 